You will notice that across the world, there appear to be ongoing pilot schemes, whether it's for censorship or extreme measures during the coronavirus pandemic that sometimes play out in nations like Australia or Canada, almost as if we're being prepared for new globalist measures, the legitimization of further authoritarianism. It's happening right now in Brazil. A Brazilian Supreme Court judge is introducing new measures to legitimize censorship and control of social media platforms. Rumble has already left Brazil because they don't want to be bogged down and tied up in this type of censorship and this type of corruption. Now, what you will remember is when Bolsonaro was in office, he was regarded as the Brazilian Trump. We got to get rid of this guy. He's a tyrant. He's a dictator. He's an authoritarian lunatic. We got to bring in Lula da Silva a liberal politician, a person who's going to bring freedom back to Brazil. And yet, under the guise of neoliberalism, we're seeing more authoritarianism, more censorship. This is extraordinary. Now, whatever you think of Elon Musk, when it comes to matters such as these, as you will see Michael Schellenberger say in a minute, he is uniquely positioned and empowered to oppose the type of censorship that will affect all of us sooner or later. Because increasingly it becomes clear to me that once the terrorist was regarded as a foreign invader and a mad renegade, but increasingly this term terrorist could be applied to you or to me or to any dissenting voice. Let's have a look at how Brazil are now using censorship laws that would have been unthinkable a few years ago, how Elon Musk is opposing it, and what we're all going to have to do if we don't want Brazil to become a test case for global censorship. We've seen it in Canada. We've seen it in our country, the UK, online censorship bills that are not being fully utilised and pushed yet, but you can bet they will be. And notably, we've seen it in Ireland with their new hate speech laws. You have to firstly demonise the public, legitimise the use of more authority, and I believe that an integral part of it when there's a globalist model that's being craved and worked towards is piloting it in territories where you might be able to get away with a little more. Let's see how this Brazil thing plays out and let's have a look at some legacy media reporting on the story to kick us off. Musk says he will challenge an order by a Supreme Court judge in Brazil who ordered his company X, formerly known as Twitter, to block some accounts. In a post on X, Musk accused the judge of violating Brazil's constitution and he called for him to resign or be impeached. The judge has been involved in efforts to crack down on misinformation in Brazil. So it's unconstitutional, brazenly and repeatedly betrayed the constitution and people of Brazil. He should resign or be impeached. Imagine these measures were being passed under Bolsonaro. They would have said, see the Brazilian Trump, fear these right wing populist figures, these neo 20th century dictators. We got to shut them down. And yet once again, it's under the guise of liberalism that we're seeing this authoritarianism being legitimized. The judge has been involved in efforts to crack down on misinformation in Brazil and threatened to impose heavy fines for any reactivation of the accounts in question. So is it only censorship? when it's used to shut down the free speech of people who you think should be silenced? Or is the principle of free speech something that you would afford to those that most oppose you? Clearly, it's the latter that's true. Michael Schellenberger, friend of the show, great journalist in my view, has spoken out on this. Let's have a look. This is Michael Schellenberger reporting from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Last night, around 8 p.m. local time, Federal Supreme Court Justice Alexandre de Moraes announced a criminal investigation into Elon Musk, the owner of X, formerly known as Twitter, for allegedly spreading disinformation, obstructing justice, and allowing people who de Moraes had banned from social media to freely express their views. de Moraes said he would fine X $20,000 per day for every banned person who Musk allows to speak. As such, Jim Ordice has taken Brazil one step closer to being a dictatorship. What's more, the events of the last few weeks make clear that Elon Musk is the only thing standing in the way of global totalitarianism. Without free speech, there can be no democracy. If X goes down, we must continue to fight. We can continue to communicate through email and other social media platforms such as Facebook. But email is no substitute for the capacity of social media platforms to share information instantaneously with millions of people. It's extraordinary that a platform of that scale and a person who wields the kind of financial and political and social power that Elon Musk currently uh, has can be opposed 
in this way. It's extraordinary to me that free speech appears now to be a mutable matter. That really, when people are talking about free speech and censorship, they are continually recalibrating what free speech constitutes, what is legitimate to censor and control. Now, Rumble, somewhat nobly, one has to say, have already left Brazil precisely because they don't want to be subject to this type of compromises and no doubt these kind of fines. Now, whatever you think about Elon Musk, you know, because he's got a lot of interest. He's got interest in electronic vehicles. He's got interest in satellites and space exploration. He's even got interest in fire extinguishers. When it comes to this issue, Elon Elon Musk says he is and appears to be behaving like a free speech absolutist. If Brazil are able to ultimately prevent X from freely publishing and are able to ensure through fines that X censors certain accounts, presumably to shut down opponents of the state. Of course, they won't say that. Oh, they're opponents of the state. They'll say it's disinformation or misinformation. This is another step towards the kind of centralized totalitarianism that I think all of you in the freedom movement are terrified of, that all of us are collectively trying to oppose. You've heard that the EU are implementing comparable measures. You know that in Ireland, hate laws are being proposed that would mean that the police would have the right to come and search your house, search your devices. You're aware from the story we've just seen about Alex Jones that the deep state confess that they themselves publish information that they know not to be true in order to bait and provoke and control and shut down dissent. This is an extraordinary moment for all of us. Let's have a look at Elon Musk's explanation on his own platform X. We kept getting these demands from um, uh, this uh, Judge uh, Alexander. Um, that's his that's his name on Twitter uh, at Alexander. Um, and there would be to suspend accounts um, immediately. We we're given typically two hours to suspend an account or face massive fines. Ah! Etc. How do I get ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine? See, I know I can do it. I know I can say it. Doctors won't prescribe it. I can barely say it. Americans are waking up now more than ever. We need life-saving medications on hand, accessible, in our palms, because these aren't just remedies. They're lifelines for next time, because there will be a next time. You know there'll be a next time. You know they'll come up with something. The wellness company's contagion emergency kit is unique. This prescription kit provides carefully selected, effective medications for COVID-19, and respiratory illnesses. Ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine. There you go, HCQ. Let's just call it HCQ. z pack or z pack and butsonide, along with a nebulizer. Isn't that the spaceship in the Matrix? And a guidebook for safe use. Rest easy knowing emergency meds are on hand. Backed by research, endorsed by experts like Dr. Peter McCulloch and Dr. Harvey Risch, the wellness company's contagion emergency kit is a must-have. You gotta have it. Go to twc.health forward slash brand. Get your own contagion Asian emergency kit now. That's twc.health forward slash brand. That code brand saves you $30 at checkout. Kits are, I'm sorry to tell you, my brothers and sisters in the UK, in Europe, my brothers and sisters on the continent of Africa, in India and China. This is only available in the United States. So if you are an American or you live there, visit twc.health forward slash brand and use brand to save $30 and you get free shipping. That's not bad, is it? Okay, let's get back to the video. The final straw is we were, we were being given demands to suspend setting setting members of the parliament and major journalists and moreover we could not tell them that it this was at the behest of uh alexander morales we had to pretend that it was due to our rules of service and that was the final straw and we said no it's extraordinary now i suppose what we're being invited to do is ignore that principles are being violated which many people are willing to do just because of the side of the argument they happen to be on. There'll be many people that because of their disdain for Donald Trump will not notice how terrifying it is that NATO are bypassing the national sovereignty of the nation of America, let alone the population of America, by ensuring that the funding model for the ongoing Ukraine-Russia conflict is protected in the event of a Trump presidency. It seems that even becoming president of the United States is not enough to ensure that democracy 
endures. And when it comes to what's happening now in the nation of Brazil, the, you know, because in Trump and Musk, we're talking about some of the most powerful anti-authoritarian voices. I don't know if you like Elon Musk or Donald Trump. I know there'll be people here watching this that loathe Elon Musk, that loathe Donald Trump, that despair of me. That's why it's important to have values and principles, because if you've got values and principles, the personalities are not so relevant. Do I believe in free speech? Yes. Do I recognize that the value of free speech means that I will sometimes hear speech that I disagree with? And in fact, that has to be the speech that I consider most valuable and most worthy of protection. Well, then now we can have an argument about morality and philosophy and all of those things can happen in a democratic forum. But for now, what we are ultimately, either through our passivity or by our active endorsement engaging in, is the legitimization of further authoritarianism. Let's look at this in a little more detail. Uh, this is from Public. Alexandra de Moraes, Brazil's powerful president of the Superior Electoral Court and Supreme Federal Court Justice, on Sunday ordered the federal police to launch a digital malicious investigation prompted by ex-owner Elon Musk's conduct. Musk was posting about restrictions imposed on accounts on X at the behest of Brazil's authorities and on Sunday said he would publish everything demanded by Moraes and how those requests violate Brazilian law. He also called for external justice Alexand Alexandre de Moraes to resign or to be impeached. Since taking office, President Lula da Silva has massively increased government funding of the mainstream corporate news media, most of which are encouraging increased censorship. I always think this when you see a dissident being attacked, and obviously I'm not pretending that I've not been personally affected by that, I have, that the legacy media are not neutral observers. They got skin in the game. They are heavily invested in shutting down independent media. And as your great comedian George Carlin said, where interests converge, no conspiracy is required. If the state want people on lockdown, if Big Pharma want people to take a medication. If the legacy media receive a significant amount of their funding from Big Pharma, those interests converge. No conspiracy is required. I'm not saying that there isn't a conspiracy, but as you know, on this channel, we believe it is important to corroborate our claims. Plainly, what's happening in Brazil is the simultaneous subsidy of corporate media in exchange, I would assume, for their support of Lula's presidency and in conjunction with that, more draconian and punitive measures for social media, but in particular, independent media operatives utilizing those platforms. If they can do it in Brazil, they can do it in America. They can do it in the UK. Already Rumble have left France. Rumble are out of Brazil. I'm not saying Rumble is the perfect platform, but they have been perfect when it comes to the principle of free speech saying simply this, we don't get involved in what the content creators create. We simply provide a platform that leaves the moral choices to you. You can decide whether you like me or trust me or don't like me or think I'm lying. That's entirely up to you. And I would say that that discernment, your ability to decide for yourself whether your government's lying, the judiciary are lying, the legacy media are lying. That is your freedom. Don't allow anybody in that space between you and what I would call God and what you might call intuition. There's no way that we can legitimize or allow the legitimization of authoritarianism of this nature. This is cause for, I would say, deep concern. Since taking office, I, I've mentioned to you, he's massively increased government funding. Moraes illegally demanded that Twitter reveal private information about Twitter users. We've seen more of this. We've seen Google giving over, over caches of information. We've seen your American government using private firms to capture information, which they then purchase, bypassing laws that prevent them doing that directly. Uh, t uh, Twitter users who used hashtags he considered inappropriate. He demanded access to Twitter's internal data violating the platform's policy, let alone, never mind the platform's policy, what about the laws of that nation? He censored on his own initiative and without any respect for due process posts on Twitter by parliamentarians from the Brazilian Congress. And Moraes tried to turn Twitter's content moderation policies into a weapon against supporters of then President Jair Bolsonaro. Remember, that guy was the baddie. Do you remember that? The Twitter files 
also revealed that Google, Facebook, Uber, WhatsApp, and Instagram betrayed the people of Brazil. They provided the Brazilian government with personal registration data and telephone numbers without a court order, therefore violating the law. Oh, well, if you've, got, if you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to hide. Yeah, well, let's just hope that one day the stuff you care about, the stuff you believe in, doesn't transgress the internal policies of an increasingly authoritarian Brazilian government, and yet more terrifyingly than that, even though Brazil is, of course, one of the most populous and glorious nations on this planet, an entire planet yielding to this kind of mentality. When Twitter refused to provide Brazilian authorities with private user information, including direct mes messages, the government attempted to sue Twitter's top Brazilian lawyer. Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook, abandoned his principled free speech position in 2020 after three years of relentless pressure from activist NGOs, Democrats and corporate advertisers. Today, Facebook actively represses the spread of news. Indeed, you will recall that Instagram just slyly, suddenly, without any announcement or fanfare, just flipped a switch within the app that meant you will not see news on that platform unless you directly request it. And I can already see that the way that some of our posts are being received on that platform has been impacted. They're not trying to protect you. You would have to have almost limitless trust in their motives to believe that this is anything other than the protection and assertion of power. But I will say that they've introduced me to a pretty novel concept. For the first time ever there, I felt, except for when I was watching the Social Network movie, I felt a little bit sorry for Mark Zuckerberg because I feel like, well, even though he's one of the world's most powerful men, he's only powerful in that role. He's only powerful if he complies. He only has the power to support the system. Getting pressure from NGOs, Democrats, corporate advertisers. He's a human being like you and me, and he is a part of the system and a part of the machine. And I guess, again, whatever you think about Elon Musk, he ain't yielding. So I know a lot of people, I see cynicism, and you know, I see people attacking me. I see people attacking all sorts of people. But... He is standing up, isn't he? He's standing up. He's participating in the fight right now when it comes to this issue. The mainstream corporate news media have never been more corrupt and totalitarian, with few exceptions. They spread government propaganda as a matter of policy. Nobody demands censorship more than the corporate media, which benefit from governments shutting down their competitors. Again, this is something I can speak about with some personal experience and understanding. The legacy media want to destroy independent media voices because day by day, their audience is diminishing because you don't trust them. And you're right not to trust them because they see it as their role to normalize, popularize, and convey the agenda of the powerful with as little circumspection as possible. Think of any shiny floor American news show you like and just hear the dumb timbre of the voice and the constant conveyance of the agenda of the powerful. The pandemic was a seismic, epochal moment because it showed us how these institutions work together to ensure a kind of 360 orb of power, impenetrable by all but the most awakened of minds. That's why we have a duty to engage in personal disciplines that allow us to awaken together and discern and a set of values and principles that are about the freedom of speech of people we disagree with. Governments are either not protecting free speech or actively participating in the war upon it. So again, Schellenberger here makes the point that legacy media and governments don't, they don't need to be drilled. The legacy media do not like Joe Rogan's success or Tucker Carlson's success or even my success. They don't like it that me and you have this vibe that we trust one another, that you know I'm different from you in a hundred ways, that you would disagree with me on a thousand topics, but I believe in your freedom. I believe in your right to disagree with me. I, I believe in your right to your religion or lack of religion or your culture or your identity. We have a set of basic principles that they're pretending aren't there about free speech, about consent, about care, about love, about community. And they're saying, although these things, they're a post-structuralist, bizarre concoction. There's no such thing as meaning. There's no such thing as God. There's no such thing as friendship. We're just blobs here to consume and devour whatever's put in front of us, whether it's bad information or bad, bad television, bad content, bad food. They just put it in front of us and expect us to consume. Last month, the US Supreme Court held a hearing where justices made clear that they were fine with the US government pressuring social media companies to censor. 
Last week, the Scottish government implemented a law to crack down on so-called hate speech, including jokes by comedians. Are you starting to notice a trend yet? Are you noticing how it's never to empower their opponents? Are you noticing how it's never to empower ordinary people? Do you notice how there's always some slew of victims that they can utilize? It's all that we've got to protect these people. Do you really think that's what got them into politics? What got them into business? Got them into media? Anything other than this wild and vapid appetite for power? Although even this I want to retract because I know they're human beings too and we must operate from a place of love and forgiveness. In Ireland, the government wants the power to send police into people's homes to search computers and phones for hate speech. In Canada, the governing Liberal Party wants the power to send people to prison for life for the things they've said. And the European Union has empowered a tiny group of bureaucrats to decide what is true and false and engage in mass censorship. All of this is happening at the very same moment that government intelligence organisations are working through NGOs to interfere in elections by spreading disinformation about populist activists and political candidates. Indeed, it's these kind of NGOs and organisations organizations that were instrumental in the attacks on me in September. We have Freedom of Information Act requests in with several significant agencies and government departments that have already been incredibly revealing and they're tr still trying to control that information. It's an astonishing time. In other words, governments are demanding censorship in order to protect their ability to spread disinformation. Of course it's that. Of course they don't care about you. What would make you imagine for even a moment that your government cares about you? What have they done for you lately? Which of the wars? Which of the policies? What aspect of the facilitation of global corporations or unelected globalist bodies is it that makes you think they love you and your family and the people you care about? What have they done for you lately? Making matters worse, governments are directly financing corporate news media. The current Brazilian government is spending 30 times more than the previous government on media advertising in order to spread its disinformation. Similarly, uh, in recent years, the political party that runs our country, the Conservative Party, spent more money than any other organization on advertising. I'd love to fact check that, but I seem to recall it. We'll get a fact check on it before I convey it because we take this stuff pretty seriously. Uh, after Musk bought Twitter, the Biden administration and the Democratic Party declared war on him. Various government agencies filed multiple frivolous lawsuits against Musk and his companies in ways very similar to the war the Brazilian government is waging against X. What all of this reveals is that until Musk bought Twitter, he didn't really have freedom of expression. The US government felt that it controlled both the corporate news media and social media companies. We saw in the Twitter files that the FBI orchestrated a disinformation and censorship campaign in order to protect Joe Biden. That amounts to anti-democratic practices. We know that Google filter, control, and curate information to ensure that a news agenda favorable to the Biden administration can be met. And that's not because they love Joe Biden and his ice cream licking lips and his aviator shades. It's because Joe Biden is a stooge of the establishment, that the Democrat party is the party of war, the party of censorship, the party of power now. After that, the US Department of Homeland Security and the Stanford Internet Observatory engaged in a mass censorship effort around the 2020 election elections and COVID. And that's why COVID was such a significant time for all of us. We all learned a great deal during that period. Primarily, legacy media works together with government organizations, state departments, peculiar, shaded, often publicly funded, yet private organizations that are interested in censorship and de-amplification de -amplification of information that empowers you. And here's a significant piece in all this. This is Bernie Sanders in 2022 talking about Joe Biden sending the CIA to to ensure democracy in Brazil. Fortunately, that election went the way that the Biden administration would have it, having a companion and ally in Lula, something they did not have in the previous inc uh, incumbent of office in that country. Let's have a look at Bernie Sanders saying that. I believe this is from 2022. By the way, in fairness to the Biden administration, before we talk about their relationships uh, with progressive governments, they have, and I think in an unusual way, uh, you know, sent the CIA and sent the Secretary of Defense down to Brazil yeah. uh, over the last several months to make it clear uh, that they did not want to see a rigged election or a coup. Uh, and that's what the Biden people did.
Why would you trust the CIA? Isn't that in a way comparable to the CIA involvement in Ukrainian, ele and ele in Ukrainian elections and even a Ukrainian coup in 2014? You got democracy as long as that democracy is in absolute alignment with the interests of the powerful. Otherwise, you ain't got no democracy. You ain't got no free speech at all. But hey, but that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.